uh, freedom. Um, and they've been targeted and enclosed by closure, by, um, by these checkpoints um, and other means of segregation, um, causing so many youth from being victims of their own violence in their own communities. And that's where I want to take how has this issues locally in Los Angeles been taken and being globalized not only uh, in other states, uh, but also internationally, like the transnational impact of, uh, of youth violence and in regards to what is happening. Um, and for that, we have uh, Juan Pacheco, whose, uh, whose expertise in this, I cannot exclaim so much how he's been able to be a real true advocate for uh, the Central American community in Virginia in the midst of where policies have been implemented uh, to target this population and can't wait to hear what he has to say. You know, there's greatest honor you could have is uh, being introduced by a, a person who has uh, given his life to the move, mobilizing of young people and uh, the generations of dreams, right? So uh, I'm honored that you introduced me, brother, because you also have been in the struggle of uh, transformation, you know, the struggle of revolution. And let's not get confused and get it twisted because revolution is a actually sacred terms. What is the opposite of re revolution is compliance. It is conformity. It is assimilation. And it is those words that keep our community stagnating in these things that you call conclaves, these isolated silos of uh, racism and sexism and classism and all the other isms that keep us apart, bro, that keep our black and brown fighting. Because as Martin Luther King used to say, right, what does Pharaoh use to keep control? Got to keep the slaves fighting among themselves. And we're tired of that. We're tired of slaves like us, people who struggle, people who feel pain, people who are out there in poverty, fighting amongst each other. So we have to reverse that equation. We gotta put some new variables into this thing, this reality that's killing our young people and devouring their lives day in and day out. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I wanna say and say that I have very, I uh, have gratitude in my heart and I hope that great creators in this room, this the sacred place, place and time, whatever you call your creator, uh, let the spirit of the elders be here, that wisdom, that, uh, that knowledge that will teach us how to have direction, not to make the mistakes of the past. We need that energy and the spirit of the young people because that's who we're here to do, that young woman right here, 13 years old, younger, youngest one in the room, and the ones to come, the ones that deserve us to keep on fighting, to generating, uh, an equal playing field so they can thrive and move forward and live and love and have a wonderful life away from violence. Hope the spirit of familia is in this room, not the spirit of individualism, because that individualism is the thing that, again, enclaves us to only think that I matter. Let's move on to the we. And hopefully that spirit of just creator to be here to transcend religion, classism, and all the other things that keep us apart so what I'm going to do this morning is tell you a story. I hope that you can understand that the story is a flirting and dancing of the individual effect and the pain and the grief that was caused to me and the terror that was inflicted to my people, but also about the dance with the uh, causation of violence among young people in the world. So let's see how this dance goes. Let's see what tune. Maybe it's going to be reggaeton. Maybe it's going to be a little bit hip hop. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be dancing. Let's see what happens. Uh, I hope you listen to my words with good heart, good ears, good, uh, good eyes, and you uh, hear with good spirit. I come from a little país named El Salvador, and contrary to popular belief that we get in the media and in the newspapers and, and all the other sources of uh, misinformation, there's other things that come from my country besides gang members, uneducated folks, day laborers, struggles, poor people, and all the other lies that you've been told to disengage you from me. The actual name of my country is called Cuscatlan, the name of pride. It, it means land of jewels. What a beautiful name, don't you think? 
Because when you all hear about the name of Salvador, you all get confused. You only hear the lies that you've been told. You only hear about the MS gang members and 18 gang members and here and that and blah, 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 and, and violence and war and here and that, right? So I'll tell you a little bit about that war and what happened to me when I was young. When I was a young man, I had a nice life in El Salvador. My mom was a social worker. My father was an accountant. We had a stable life. Mother used to come home, cook for us, be there, you know what I'm saying? That, that sacred entity or unit called the familia, the family unit, right? Who's supposed to take care of you, who's supposed to love you, who's supposed to give you all what Maslow called the hierarchy of needs, right? From a house to home to food to love to self-actualization, right? My mother had dignity, my father had honor, right? But then things started to brew in my country. Uh, generated by unseen forces that I did not understand. Generated by players that had plans for this poor little country in the middle of Central America. To let the slaves fight amongst them, themselves. Let the hungry fight amongst themselves and kill each other, right? So all of a sudden, the world in my life started to become unstable. Me and that young woman's uh, mother, my sister, used to hide under beds because of bullets and bombs and destruction and, and ugliness and terror that was caused upon our people by other players. And so uh, that life was hard. My world was overturned. No longer did I feel safe. No longer did I feel freedom. No longer did I feel that, 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 that beautiful imaginative energy of young people to, 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 to imagine a world without boundaries, right? All I saw was terror, ugliness, horror, death, blood, and the smell of ugliness all around me. I was marketed to the rest of the world because it was a what, fight for communism? I don't know what they, they, they called it. I don't know. I don't know what country was involved in that. You guys probably know what it was. Uh, two players, distant cousins, right, fighting for stupidities of symbolism and, and, and theories of governmental control. So I, poor people, took the bait, full sinker, and we started killing each other. So what could my parents do? Let's bring this around here for the black and brown unity thing, right? Immigrants here in America, there's a lot of myths that we hear about immigrants, right? We, wh what do we hear? They laborers, they're coming here to take our jobs, they're coming from the south to north, why don't they stay there? Why are they taking all our jobs away? Blah, 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 right? That's what we hear in, in our newspapers, right? Let me tell you about immigrants. Immigrants make the biggest sacrifice you can ever imagine. And that is to leave everything behind, especially when it comes to the destruction of the country and the infrastructure because of another country. Leave everything behind. Their lives, their families, their jobs, their opportunities, their, their, their love, their land, their, their careers. So my parents did that to give a young man named Juan Pacheco and a young woman named Rosalba and a little boy named David an opportunity to live away from that violence that was not caused by me or my family. Again, we were individual effects who were uh, subjugated to the tyranny of lies and confusion. So uh, my parents brought us to the United States and we were sold that dream that if we came here, everything was gonna be all right. This country paid by, 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 uh, by sidewalks of gold and dollar bills in every, every corner and all you needed to do was to pick it up, right? So we came and we ended up living in the ghettos of America where these homeboys study and, and, and live and work. You know, those, those ghettos of America when young people are subjugated to the poverty and drug dealing and prostitution and ugliness that goes that, that, that deprives them from a future. See, but the rest of the world don't know that, right? They don't know that. They don't know our shame. They don't know our dirtiness. They don't know our taintedness in this country. But yes, we feel it. Every day that we go into those neighborhoods when we see those homeboys cry, boy, right? You right, homie? Right? About not being able to thrive and the pain that, that, that a, a system that doesn't care how, how, how they subjugate them to that, that control and how they feel like nothing, or maybe even less. Right? I, f I felt like that in my school, in my neighborhood, in my world, in my, even in my family structure because everything got turned around. No longer could mama be there to give me my comidita, my frijoles y platanos, right? She had to work two to three jobs. Father, with that accounting degree, the only thing he could do was, was be a, a custodian. Same with mom, right? So what does that do to my identity, right? 
See, with people with, in, 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 in gangs, young people in gangs are willing to hurt you to the degree that they're dying inside themselves. But they're not dying because of their own choosing, right? They're dying because of that reflective mirror that they see from society that builds their identity. And they would rather choose something than be nothing. They would rather be radical failures because they can't find success in our world because we're hidden, right? We're the uh, stepchild ambassadors of America. So what could I do in that world? because we're all human beings and in this universal familia and celestial thing we call humanity, I look for those things that Maslow described in his theory. Love, acceptance, nurturing, uh, basic needs, a home, uh, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of uh, moving forward. And I found it in the only place that was available to me in my neighborhood. And that was a gang. I joined the only entity that uh, allowed me to dream, to feel good, to feel proud of who I was, to be proud of being Latino, came at a cost though. That is the violence. See, this is where we need to kind of change the tortilla around. We gotta turn it over, right? People usually think that Latinos or African Americans are the cause of the gang problem, when in actuality, gangs are the effect of ineffective communities. Communities that are broken, communities that don't communicate, communities that, are, that deny the problem, communities that overreact with this issue, communities that underact when it comes to gang violence and youth violence in America, right? Instead of coming together and talking and making sure that young people, we all do our part, play our position like a game and do what we need to do to make sure that our young people have a better future in America, right? So what happened? I chose this group and it came out of cost. In this group, I ended up with three felonies. In this group, I ended up going to jail five times. In this group, I have about like 20 subpoenas. In this group, my best homeboy got shot right in front of me. In this group, I really found out the real meaning of friendship because I only got one letter when I was incarcerated in those dungeons of shame that we call jails in America. And what happens? And I was tired of being tired. It's the other paradigm we need to sh change in America. See, because in the gang, right, the gang teaches you, conditions you, just like a sniper is conditioned to take the first shot. You know, young people don't go out there and kill the first person the first day they're in the gang, right? Happens little by little. It takes your humanity away little by little, right? But where the gangs learn all that violence? From a system of greed and power that has controlled our people forever. So, uh, what I needed was a community that believed in redemption at a time when I didn't believe in forgiveness. But what happens in America, right? Let me tell you what happens in America. We have ch child soldiers in America just like there's child soldiers in Africa, just like there's child soldiers in the Middle East, right? But child soldiers in the rest of the world deserve compassion, deserve love, deserve programs, deserve, deserve social entities of goodwill, right? There's millions of dollars that are sent to the rest of the world to fix their child soldier issue. What happens to the child soldier in America? What happens to the homies that wear these colors and are willing to defend it with their lives? What happens to them here, right? Yeah, we don't like to talk about our dirt. We'd rather fix it somewhere else, miles away, right? We need to change that around too. Um, so I joined this group and I needed a society to be a little bit more forgiving. It wasn't. Uh, and it was hard. The only reason why I changed my life was because I met some homeboys that brought an idea to Northern Virginia. See, I live in one of the richest counties in the United States. It's called Fairfax County, right? So don't feel bad, because I know you all been told the lie that if money was the answer, you know, there wouldn't be a problem. So why the heck is it a problem in Fairfax County, right? Because again, we're not able to uplift those social entities of goodwill. Because nobody's, everybody's comfortable. They feel comfortable sitting down in their office or in their church or in their school and they're not willing to break the walls of the institutions to go to the young people. See, a gang member's not gonna come right now to UCLA, right, and ask your entity and say, hey guys, can you save my life? I'm hurt, I'm broken, I'm abused, I'm, 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 I'm disintegrated every day. We got to go to them to increase the probability 
that young people will change and will thrive. So I found these people, right? And this nonprofit organization called Barrios Unidos. What? Barrios Unidos means United Neighborhoods. What they intended to do was unite hey, all the homeboys that were dying out there, you know what I'm saying, whether being African American or Latino or Asian or whatever, because see, this violence transcends this I issue of color, right? Because of lies. And uh, let me tell you one lie, right? So when, I, when, when I'm in school, let me tell you how I deal with things, right? There's this big kind of conflict between like African Americans and Latinos, right? In, 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 in Fairfax. And the way I, 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 I kind of go about it in schools is I, I kind of teach history, right? Tell the young people, okay, well, you know, you, I, I remember a long time ago I went to this high school, right? And the African American kids were in one corner and the Latinos were all in the other corner, right? And the principal was there and the kids weren't saying nothing, right? So what do I do? I had to kick out the principal, right? So I told him to get out. Now the young people start talking, right? I say, so wait, man, what, what's up with this, right? And they start saying about uh, the issues that were going in the school about the issues of uh, misunderstanding in terms of their reality, right? And they were talking about, yeah, you know, this immigration issue and the you know, black and brown issue, right? And I asked the young people, okay, so tell me what you hear about immigrants, right? So the African American community was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I hear it in my community, you know, they're coming here to take our jobs and they're coming from the south to the north and they're crazy, man, they're willing to walk this big desert, right, to get here. What's wrong with these immigrants, right? Then I asked the African American, the, the Latino kids about the reality of, of, of the African American community. And they, something came up with both worlds. And they asked him, hey, you guys ever heard about uh, Harriet Tubman? Tell me about Harriet Tubman. Tell me about her struggle, right? Where'd she come from? Where was she freeing slaves from? Right? The African-American kids, eh? from the south to the north. Oh, wow. Why was she willing to do that? To give her, her young children a better future, right? Ah, why was she willing to do it? And why was she willing to give up her life? Well, didn't you just tell me the same about them? And I, I do the same kind of thing with the African-American, the, the Latino kids. I say, hey, homie, describe your community. Yeah, man, I live in the ghetto, and I only eat McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? I can't even speak my language. I can't even hear my music. People want me to shut up in school. People want me to learn this new history. Oh, describe the slave quarters back in the day, too. Same conclusion. See, now we can talk. Now we can see commonality. And that it was the same system that ever has broken us from the beginning that are breaking you right now. So young people, don't be slaves. Liberate yourself, understand each other because the same force is killing you right now. Be one, have this unity, right? And so uh, I tell you that story because I was always ingrained to hate African Americans. And until I fought, found Mr. B, Harry Belafonte and Nane, people who were willing to be uncomfortable and bring people together that would have never met each other, right? I finally understand the reality and the connection with every single one of you. And that is our humanity, right? What happens when you allow young people to dream and to thrive and to move forward, right? Barrios Unidos took a risk on me. They, they uh, hired me when I, uh, I didn't go to school. I actually lost a full-time scholarship to George Mason University, right? I almost didn't graduate from high school. But uh, because they gave me an opportunity, they actually gave me a job where I started kind of earning, I think it was like $35,000, <laughs> you know? And because they uh, supported me, they gave me, um, first of all, they built a relationship. We ain't never gonna fix nothing with you know, these nebulous ideas of research and here and blah, blah, blah. The, the way I put, put it in terms is, you know, we got to stop you know, these talk forces. You know how people have task forces in community? We need to stop talking. We need to be intelligent with our intelligence. We got enough, we gotta act. We gotta make sure young people have relationships, connections, mentors, uh, opportunities, alternatives, and dreams not just talk. So because Barrios Unidos did that, I did graduate from, from, uh, from high school. I uh, graduated from uh, George Mason University two years ago. <laughs> and my dream, ever since I was a little boy, was to buy my beautiful mother, the woman who thrived, who clean toilets, who sweep floors for almost 20 years. I wanted to buy her a brick home, a brick house. So I earned, I earned enough money to actually go to, to med school. Last year, though, uh, my mother needed some help. And without asking twice, took most of my money out 
And me and her mother and my little brother bought my mom a house. I am going to be a physician. But in the meantime, in the meantime, maybe I, I will just be a healer of words, maybe. So maybe I could tell these young people a story of uh, redemption, of forgiveness, somebody who would deny, uh, who rejected the American dream of instant gratification, right? And who decided to go back to the same hood which he had destroyed as a young man. And see all the homeboys and homegirls out there, you know, uh, stuck in the world of violence, have that inside their hearts. They all have a gift that the great creator gave them that's willing to jump up, all right? They deserve adults like you to stop labeling them. So we need to kind of lay down those words like at risk. What the heck is at risk? Why I always gotta be at risk? Why can I be just a young person with untapped potential? Let me tell you why. Because being at risk takes the responsibility away from you. Being a young man with untapped potential means somebody gotta go out and tap. And that takes work. But it is the work that the young people deserve. Young people are waiting. They're waiting for you to come to them. They're waiting for us extended hand instead of mano dura or hard hand approach that we've, we've instituted in the United States. Uh, before I go, I'm just gonna leave you with a, a couple of um, information, more uh, kind of data-driven and reality-driven issues here in the United States. Again, globally, the thing that's killing young people in progress is the need to only rely on one entity to fix this issue. And that is we rely too much on suppression in America. Suppression means incarceration, deportation, prosecution, stricter laws, and throwing, you know, locking people up and throwing away the key. What we need is a different paradigm. See, because we only relied on the criminal justice system in America, we only have limited tools. So what we need to do in America is to have a new way of thinking, a new way of uh, dealing with young people and youth violence. Instead of the criminal justice uh, department dealing with violence, we need to look at this as a public health issue. Because if you look at this as a public health issue, then there is remedies, then there is prevention, there is intervention. There is a way to help these young people, right? It's no longer a character flaw or a cultural flaw. All African Americans and all Latinos have a higher, you know, uh, chance of having gang, but you know what we get every day, right? Now, it's uh, preventable. Now we can do something about it. The other thing is at the local level, again, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta stay ahead of the curve. You know, learning about gang violence and gang issues and helping young people takes too long, right? And it, it goes the same way every time. In every community, there's always denial, right? Let's make sure that we can identify that denial to make sure that we can put, keep on putting the, the, the feet on the, on the skillet of the people who need to move forward, right? We need to stop denying the issue because when we deny the issue, what happens? Why do we deny the issue? Because those are not my kids getting into you know, all these shootouts. So let, let, let them just shoot, shoot, shoot themselves over there, right? But see, that's somebody else's kids, man. That could have been me. That could have been your child, right? The other issue is overreaction. And that's thinking that only one entity, meaning law enforcement, can take care of this issue, right? And, and dealing only with, again, the incarceration and deportation of young people and more stricter laws. And then under action, we need to make sure that we all communicate, make sure that we move forward together. Teachers, pastores, churches, everybody in the community has a, 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 a part to play in the prevention of violence in our world. And even the gang members themselves, right? And young people. Make sure you invite young people and gang members to your community engagement when you talk about youth violence. Um, but again, at the personal level, when you're dealing with a young person looking eye to eye, man, right? It's all about rela relationships. It's all about that other human being. See, programs don't help people. Programs don't help people. People help people. People who care, people who have heart, people who are willing to give away their title and their life for these homies. You know what I'm saying? And that takes corazón. Um, what else would I like to conclude with? Lastly, the approach is not working because suppression is futile. We cannot eradicate gangs. We cannot move gangs away to another land and hope that they will be contained. And the only thing we could do is reduce the violence to our communities. 
So let us all go out there and do our part. If you're a family member, if you're a mother, if you're a child, you know, if you're a child here in this room, go out there, man, and help each other out. Make sure that this world of violence doesn't devour you, doesn't take away your God-given potential. Make sure that you do your part and make sure that you never feel comfortable in your little seat or your position or your, your title. Make sure that you're always striving to do more, right? Because again, revolution and change is the thing that we need to make sure that young people have dreams, alternatives, and good people with good heart to move forward away from this violencia that has been marketed and put in other places in the world, right? Because again, when you talk about MS-13 and 18 and all those other pandillas, right? Once you start pointing fingers, it's kind of three pointing back at you, right? So the globalization and colonializing of violence we need to take a deeper root. Uh, it was a, has a tag in the back of right here that says made in the USA. Because before immigrants came here, somebody else was over there first. So uh, thank you for your attention. If I have said anything in this room to offend anybody, I do apologize. That was not my intention. My intention was only to uh, package and dance and flirt with the dance between causal causes and the hurt and pain of individual effects, effects like me and Alex, the homeboys that felt the pain of a community that didn't care and who forced us to uh, make limited choices, right? So uh, let's make sure that we do our part and increase the choices for young people. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. We can see the transformation in front of us of how an individual that has experienced so much trauma that literally changed his life. And, um, and I see that and I've lived that in the work that I do, uh, seeing the transformation of our youth from being involved in, in um, this path of suicide, which I called, you know, because this youth are seeking death. They're seeking to close that identity that they created that is hurting them. They're tired of it. They don't want to be hurting anymore. And they're on the path of destruction. And it's their own life who they're destroying first. Um, I want to thank you, uh, uh, Juan, for being uh, that leader that you are in uh, going out there and educating our people, but also being an example that you are. And um, he got his PhD in the streets, but then he got it in that college and he's Dr. Pacheco, right? Thank, Thank you. you.